Tony Scott was a fucking legend. Was sort of my idol when I was what? a kid. And then as I grew older and I started racing, that Chris May was only just down the road. Yeah. And I used to go to him to borrow his falchion box and just yeah. and then it fucking hell, man, I learned so much off him. Chris May, when he's yeah. just down the road, and then he's about because he was my man in just my seats, yeah, but yeah. he's old enough now. He won't really, he don't really. Right, okay, because so he was Park Algar for years, wasn't he? He was a super, super sport engine builder for years and years and years. Yeah, he's always been his own man. Yeah, ever since he was with Elf, Serge Rosse. You remember the Elf yeah, MotoGP yeah. team? Well, well, it was a Grand Prix before it was MotoGP. Um, Serge Rosse was the team manager. He was like the engine builder there, and then he came back and was he worked Kawasaki for years, and then just started doing his own stuff and I think he sort of started Red Bull Revy Red Bull Ducati if you remember okay. then yeah. he was sort of the main man then he sort of, then he was the official Honda engine builder and at that time yeah he did Park Al Gas so. I'm sure he'd done because I'm but sure he made his name to... really yeah. when Harris when that CB Asics yeah, on the yeah. first came out yeah Right, and that was just when Bomber was on it that's it yeah. that's it that's it and that was a standout bike that was Mayo's engine right okay that was Mayo's engine yeah some learning Okay, some learning I did from him. And the problem is now, Paul, I, I didn't know he, I didn't know he passed away. Yeah, legend. Uh, but, but, but another man up there. Well, if anything, sort of surpasses both of those boys. He's Stuart Johnson. Right. Okay. Yeah. Fucking Northmore engineer. Jesus Christ. Well, he was my when I rode at Tyco. I was there for fucking years. Yeah. Like, he, was, he was a man there. Yeah. Okay. So Jesus Christ, man. Some of that, like, what I learned off him. But all these fucking engine builders. I don't know if you had the fucking nutters. They're all fucking <laughs> nutters. <laughs> Look. Nutters. There is room. Hang on, on. Here we go. <laughs> Hang on. When you had to talk to her, you needed that to complement that, and then shit, they're bad. Yeah, well, but, but then, yes, yes. You learn a lot from them, boys, like your. Like Steve Mellor and Jack Valentine. Their, their background was all drag racing. Yeah. And that's why they succeeded so much in the road yeah. racing, because they brought drag technology. And you just think, like we do, I don't know if you do, we look at drag technology like fucking. You look down on it, mate. Yeah, you look down on it, don't you? But fuck, I tell you, boy. There, there. That's like because 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 that scenario is so repeatable, yeah. right? They know what fucking works. Oh, that's worth a fucking hundredth of a second. I'll fucking yeah. keep doing that. And that's where me doing. I spoke to Ian King. Would you, you see? I bet you don't even know Ian King, do you? I probably wouldn't, right? Um, five times European top fuel dragster, right? He builds the engines for Larry McBride. I bet you know Larry no, McBride. No, no, no. Right, he was first man in the fives. He's doing five point two quarter mile on a motorbike top fuel, right? So obviously, I'm trying to achieve three hundred miles. Right, and I'm just thinking, I'm sort of not hit a brick wall, brick wall, but I've sort of. I'm sure there is some innovation. Hey boy, because I came straight into this sport probably three years ago and I went fasty straight away. Like Jack Frost has been doing this for years. Yeah. Right? Fucking like 20 odd years, right? And I went straight in and I was quicker than him. Not straight away, like, yeah. after, like after doing a year, I was like, I'll be. And I think it's because I came in with just, I didn't know anything about yeah, sport. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I was like you, I've been. I was that, mate. I was circuit racing. Yeah. yeah, we, yeah. Didn't, we didn't know what we should have done, we just did what we do. Exactly. Well, I went into the mile racing, which isn't drag racing, right? It's sort of a combination between land yeah. speed racing and drag racing. And I just went in there, not knowing anything, being a fucking racer. And I just, I just sort of, I put my take on it and I started going quick and I thought, oh, all right, right, right. So, yeah, that's where I think we're going to see. Yeah, the game. Sorry, I was talking about no. fucking. Yeah, yeah, Ian King, right? So I thought, right, what? You know, I've just brought my road racing experience. This is why I leave them live on the back brake and you know all of these different disciplines. I'm trying to get the thing to go to the end of the mile as, as fast as possible. So I thought, right, I've sort of nearly in a brick wall. I thought, so I, was watching, I was watching bloody thingies, cycle drag, just like a YouTube channel, right? And I thought, fucking hell, like they're doing, and they, and they wouldn't advertise it like they say, like I'm advertising like a five point two, but the, you know, that's the number that they're, that's it's their ET, that's that's all the bother about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they wouldn't shout that he's done fucking 265, yeah. they've done 265 mile an hour and a fucking quarter mile. Yeah. But they wouldn't shout about that, they shout about a 5.2, but no one gives a fuck about the yeah. speed. No. They don't give a fuck if it was 20 mile an hour, as long as they're, as long as they're ETs. I thought, like, oh, fucking hell, there's going to be something I'm going to learn off these boys. So, I rang um, Larry McBride, the man that builds the engines is Ian King, who works for Radical. Yeah. Right? He's just a bit of a hobby drag racer, yeah, yeah. yet he was five times European top fuel dragster champion. Right, so I fucking rings him up. I said, look, this is what I'm trying to achieve, right? There's something I'm gonna learn from you boys. And I said, look, I met too much power and this and this and he said, give me a month to think about it. So I went back in a month. He said, I've had a good think about it. He says, um, he, he was saying, you, you, don't make, you don't make too much power, he says, you're not making the most of it, right? And just some of this, the way it was done. He said, like, if I've got a puddle of nitromethanol on the floor, he said, you put a match in it, it'll put a match out. He said, you hit it with an hammer, it'll blow your hand off. I just how he was trying to explain me. He said, I need to go down this nitro methanol. I said, whatever. And another thing he was saying is about um, 
Like they're fifteen hundred horsepower, right, and weigh six hundred kilos. Like I only weigh like two hundred and thirty mm -hmm. kilos. So you need more weight. So this, this anyway, this is what I learned from Ian King, the top fuel man. Yeah, he's what I'm trying to put a bit of his knowledge into my discipline and try and move forward a bit with that. But yeah, yeah, I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know. I don't you, know. Uh, it's, but, but I wouldn't know, and no one can really tell me. No, like, I feel like I have fucking well with some boxes on the back of my bike, and I've got 35 kids. And, like, Jack was looking at the bike, and other boys looking, what the fuck are you doing? I said, oh, I don't really know. I won't know. Until you send it, you, 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 yeah, you will not know. You know, and it's counterintuitive, isn't it? I mean, of course it is, absolutely. But and this is why, the, like the TV program, I'm trying to make a right load. We've got rid of the 60 kilos out of that beetle since we set. And I'm saying, yeah, it, it probably will help. But, for, you know, like top fuel bikes yeah. and top fuel cars, they, they're adding weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because they're so saturated in horsepower, yeah. right? And we, we're saturated in torque, aren't we? Like, having that amount of torque to spin the tires on the dyno, as impressive as that is, that's yeah. a fucking waste of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a, yeah. a complete waste of energy. I'm turning power to smoke. Yeah, yes, it's yeah. impressive, isn't it? That we're fucking leaving rubber on the dyno, but really, is it any. Oh, is it for? Uh, no, yeah, and that's it. Drag racing, it's how quick you get out the front door. Yeah, that's the 60 foot, isn't it? It's all about the 60 foot, it's all about the 60 foot. But my discipline, I don't think is. No, yeah. I, don't, I don't think it is. It's, no, no. You could, have a fl you could have a fluffy start and still, you know what I mean? Like you said, you've got so much power, it's, it's getting to a certain point in a certain time. Yeah, yeah, and obviously by doing that, it gives you more room, room than to do it to in a do your time. Like, as I look at my, like my best ever 0 to 200 I've done, which isn't that impressive, I've done like a 10.8 0 to 200, which isn't that impressive compared to a drag time, but on my bike it is. But when I did my 282, I was like 13 seconds. Yeah. Not to 200, so nothing ties in. No, but know. then that might be those extra few seconds kept everything a little bit more stable, and so you're able to screw it on a little bit. But when I did 282, I didn't use full throttle once, and at the start of this time last year, I did 276, and I used full throttle to 0.8 of a second. And before I got to six gear, I hadn't been beyond 50% throttle. Fuck yeah. So this is why I'm, yes, yeah, so yeah, all right, I've got a shitload of horsepower. I'm not making the most of it, so that's why I've had to redesign with this extra weight, wider rear wheels. But it's not like wheel slip, I'm not chasing wheel slip because it's not spinning. No. I've got all of the grip. Like I've got a fucking brace, it's topic bending. I don't know if you. I've got like, with a, I've got like a spigot on the end of the sprocket yep. that supports the swinging arm, so it stops because it bends the motor in the frame. Right. So okay. it's trying to keep it all together. Yeah, You'd yeah. Have to, yeah it's a. Yeah. But then, then, yeah, I don't know. Probably, that's probably that's all I've ever done. That's yeah. all I've ever done is what you're yeah. doing. And now I'm coming to this spot. Yeah. And, fucking hell, man. and the key to that is. How hard and how fast can you get on the gas? That's it is, it. it is, but it's drag racing. It's fucking it's, repeatable, but that job isn't. There's so many fucking variables, isn't there? Yeah, lap to lap, it's all yeah, the fucking rider. I changed changed a load of things. I went out on a Friday. I was on test day. I was on my tyres. I run at the Superstocks last year. You know the old Pirellis. They just they'll do yeah. hundred laps at the same thing. Yeah, and I come out. I was coming out of clearways, and just in my head, I was like, screw it on, screw it on, screw it on, as hard as I could, as hard as I could. And just kick gears, and the fucking thing is pulling my arms off, and mm -hmm. it's kicking it. And I mean, I'm 65 kilos dripping wet, so I'm not the best for a big girl. And then the next lap, then I come out and I just, I didn't go as hard on the gas, and I was faster. Now, when you're out, how does that work? No, because I've come out of clearways more settled. Yeah, and yeah, then just yeah, let yeah. the bike do its thing. And you look at the data, and you're like, how can I be eight percent throttle, eight percent down on throttle for a yeah, entire run time. out of the cup, but a faster lap time? And it's just gathering momentum, yeah, M maintaining, yeah. You know, like you said, how much do you use a back brake? You know, you'd really say to a dragster, jump on a back brake. Whereas we, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What are you doing with that? Do you have to live on it with that? I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't so know. I've moved it. I I struggle when I'm on the left side of the bike. Yeah. To reach when you're the hanging pedal. off the left side. Yeah. To yeah. reach the pedal. As you always walk, yeah. So I've moved it exactly like you to a um, break. Uh, no um a normal finger brake on the clutch side. So I've dropped the clutch lever down. Ah, uh, you've got two is that how is yeah. that how it is now? Yeah, that's how it is now, yeah, if you have a look. And what have you got? Cable clutch hydraulic uh, cable clutch hydraulic setup for the rear brake. And yeah. that I went into a uh, fucking game changer. Is that right? Game I've never rode like that. I've never rode no. literally one finger having right. Um, control anti wheelie's good, but just to help help squat the bike when you do feel it wheelie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then like I was going up into Druids and I just thought, I wonder how good this is. And I just went bum bum and just grabbed a load of rear brake and it just went Brrr, on the way in. Like, okay, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can feel because I can do it one finger. You can. Just how long have you been riding like that now? Uh, that was two days I rode it like that. Right. 
and you can just feel then like, when you're right on the edge of the tire and you just give it a little squeeze you can just feel the bike come around yeah whereas I could do that on the right because I could get my foot in the right mm, position not on the left, left so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. look like Luke Staplefoot with my foot in the air yeah 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 Fuck. so that's helped but and then I, yeah. you you must have had it you used to go from superbike to stocker to 600 yeah you jump off a superbike just trying to kill you every time you're on it to the 600 and that, I bet the 600 is probably more enjoyable to ride because you can stretch the cables yeah, it is you yeah can, you know and but, like the likes of the TT with them though was fucking just because you've got to be so much more committed in the fast stuff yeah right because if you just fucking it, your fucking yeah, momentum's yeah, yeah. gone so it's yeah. just keeping that momentum yeah and you pay the price if you didn't with them six hundreds. You know, like if you fucking roll like a tenth, mm. just coming off the straight because it's fucking moved, and that's the fucking next mile yeah. fucked, and you probably lost two seconds, three seconds by the time you got to the end of that mile. Do you miss it? Not one bit, boy. I should have no. got out of it. Eight, eight, eight. That's fucking great, what I did, right? And I'm still here. Yeah. But plenty of old riders, plenty of bold riders. Not many. I'm not. I'm, so, I'm not. So, not. I'm saying I'm bold. But yeah, it, it, it should have got me really. Um, it should have got me before. Yeah. So I'm just lucky. I fucking walked away and now I've found this discipline. Yeah. Right? Really, if I'd have found this ten years ago, I should have been you doing should, that. Yeah. Just because I fucking it's like really I was never that good, right? I was never that natural. I was never I was all I was just alright. I was all I was just alright because I had a good mechanical feel and I was sort of my whole the only reason I was riding, right? I want fucking like it was nice to win, but I want all of it to fucking win it. I was just about I just wanted to better the bike and just get the mechanical thing, just feel what it was like, oh, if I make a change here with we'll it you know, I was just trying to perfect what the bike was doing. That's why I that's why I sort of did alright, you know of races right but now i found this discipline right that's, that's what this is it's all about it's just perfecting what you've got to try and get to the it lends itself to a geek this discipline of lance but yes it let you can come off it and you can go all oh, right you know you can have your crazy thoughts whereas i think short circuit racing and this was the downside now when i look back i should have paid i should have gone and ridden for smiths or i should have i should have gone and if i if i was going to be world champion or British champion at that level I needed to have people around me who were smarter than me yeah. and at the time like how you started I was running myself and I was like what the fuck is rebound what is this what, you, you know you go on a test day and you'd wind everything off oh that feels okay you wind everything on you'd read books you do this and I never got that higher level of intelligence of bike setter mm -hmm. from someone smarter than me yeah. You, you, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean yeah. And it's something I say to, I got mates now who are stepping up. Uh, one of my friends from just around the corner, his lad's just been signed into Leon Haslam's Super Sport 300 okay, team. Okay. I told Graham, pay the money. Pay the yeah. money, put him in a team, because you're going to spend the money anyway doing it on your own. Yeah. And you're going to sit at the back wondering why you're fucking here and they're there. Yeah, you're right, boy. Because right. it gets to a point where talent means bollocks in that paddock. You're fucking right. Because everyone's fast. No one goes to British and ain't fast. You're right. You know what I mean? How many revelations have we seen where they're shit on one bike? You mate, you jumped it. You've gone from team to team. Do you know what I mean? You work well with a crew chief. You're flying. Yeah. You, work, you don't work with another one. Tommy yeah, Bridewell exactly. is case in point. Yeah. I love yeah. Tommy. I think he's brilliant. I think he's a natural talent. But if yeah. you can't work Tommy, which Wilf can, Tommy's Tommy just will bite the screen until he crashes. Whereas Wilf's got him riding that bike. Well, he took it to Scott Redding. That tells you. Yeah, tells yeah, you the yeah, level yeah, of talent yeah, yeah, those yeah, boys yeah. have. Yeah, and that's yeah, but that's an interesting that's an interesting argument. That I mean, yeah, they're all fucking good riders, aren't oh. they? But they're only more they're only a bit more than average, right? I was below average, but they're just a bit more than. But because you, as soon as you chuck a quality rider in there, it goes and smokes them. You know, like like anyone so that's you're any totally good. John Hopkins, yeah. Scott Redding, everyone yeah. come back and Scott will do nothing. He had two. He didn't know any of the tracks. <laughs> didn't know it, and I just I just. Yeah, I don't, I don't keep me eye on it. I just know bits, and you just think, yeah, well, that's a quality rider, right? All right, he was, he was an average MotoGP rider, but when you chuck an average MotoGP rider in with a British scene, yeah, to ride around go kart tracks that he's not used to riding on. If Mark Marquez is the measurement of a good motorcycle oh, rider, me and fuck. you, mate, are like fucking. <laughs> Won't be polishing his shoes, boy. Won't be you know? polishing his shoes. He's a man, isn't he? Go on, bet on with my mate, or he had a bet on with me. He thought he was going to come back to Port Mayo and win. I says, fucking, hell. I know he's a legend, isn't he? I said, I don't forget, you know, anyway, I was £10 better off. Is he going to win this year? Do you think, do I think he won the championship? Yeah. I, if Quattraro doesn't blow his load, no. Right. But he's, he's number two. Right. 
All oh, right, you think he's right? He'll do some winning this year. Then. Uh, oh, yeah, right. I think he's. Fucking hell. He's just to, to come back and be that first oh, time on the back and be the first Honda. You know what? Oh, fucking hell, man. Yeah. Not even the first Honda, but do you see where it tried. He, did you. He was. Uh, was it warm up or something? And he'd done that double right in Portimao and it went on the front and it no, went on the rear and it went on the front and you're like. So, so he's still riding oh, to that point mate. then. He's oh, still God, riding yeah. beyond the level of the bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He crashed three times in like four that's seconds. What, well, that's what his modern style of riding, he can crash and get away with it. Yeah. And he just bit him in the ass that time, didn't it? But yeah, he's controllably crashing. That's the new style of motor oh, riding, isn't it? Uh, Colin Edwards put a post up the other day and Go it was on. the first time we'd ever really seen someone close the front and catch it. Yeah. And it was Colin Edwards back in the old Camel Yamaha days. All right. So what Go was on. that, like, oh, five? Yeah, it will be, it will be, um, yeah. And he, he caught it on his knee and it come back and it flipped him up and and um, MotoGP po posted it up and they got oh, the first one to ever really catch a crash. Yeah. And Colin goes, yeah, but I wouldn't have fucking gone pole on the next lap. <laughs> but they're doing that every fucking corner, yeah, yeah. man. Every... It's, it's another league, it's another world. It's another world what them boys are doing, isn't it? Like I read, I read Johnny's book. Yeah. And he said, obviously, when he went to HRC, they said, just don't crash. Mm hmm Oh, is that right? When he took Ped Rose's, yeah, is it Ped Rose's yeah, yeah. Seat? But they're like, Johnny, you're not breaking hard enough into the corner. And he's like, if you told me not to crash, mate. But, but the, how much load they've got to put on them tyres going in. Yeah. Whereas he's like, on a World Superbike tyre, I'd been down and out. Mm -hmm. Whereas a yeah, did, that, they did their lights on the dash telling him when the tyre's at temperature. Yeah. And it's got to be within that window before they can push. Could you no, imagine, could you imagine I, being I, 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 buried on the brakes on the way in? Like, you know what I mean? You get that little stutter, don't you, as it goes, and you're like, that's enough, I'll just yeah, give it a little bit yeah, more yeah. leeway. But could you imagine being blah, squeezing it on the way in? Their boys are another level. Johnny Ray's series, though, isn't he? When's their first meeting? Uh, two, two weeks, I think. Is, right, is it? Yeah. So a lot of it's just Europe this year, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah, I don't think they're doing many flyaways. Because it's... Right. Um, it's uh, is it Portimouth? It's Portimao Formula One this weekend, isn't it? it so is, where's yeah. Moto GP? Is it is there a Moto GP? Is this it weekend? GP this weekend or next weekend? I'm not sure. Because yeah, I think wherever the, the next one is, I think it's Jerez. Ah, uh, right. Okay, it's I friends. So. Yeah, right. I think so. Oh, oh mate. You put all ARP stuff in them. Yeah. Do you need to? Um, no. A lot of them we've built on um, on stock on headsets. Right. Uh, oh, sorry, on head bobs or. So we've never found. So this is going to be the same spec as our man's. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. The only difference is the line and block. I think we've ever seen a bike. How long was that bike in development? That old, because that's the old ZX7, isn't it? When he rode. Yeah, but it was like a current bike from like yeah, yeah. In, what? The rate from like 1990 when it was a ZX Air all the way to the ZX7 Air, which I think the finish race in that like 99. Yeah, what, what, uh, it was Glen Richards, wasn't it? The last one to ride in British. Ah, but yeah, yeah. That was the Super, World Super Bowl. That was what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was. Who was the Japanese? Anyway, just trying to think of the. Video. They were all at, like, um, there's a guy on YouTube I've subscribed to his channel, and he's like been showing all like the 2000 BSB races and stuff. Yeah, he's got them on. So like when Hodgie and Walker were taking lumps out of each other. Oh yeah, that, that was a factory bike. Mate, that that, that was Suzuki. Fuck you yeah, now. <laughs> but we don't see that now. They're just everything now is just like that. A glorified road bikes. Yeah, yeah, great bikes, fantastic bikes. But not some factory the stock, factory. The stockers have got more technology on them than super bikes. That's what someone told me. In fact, Dobby, who does the AKP job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he's on Yamaha's now. Yeah. Apart yeah. from like, all right, they're on FKR, Olin's forks, trick swing arms, yeah. and slicks. But you know. Danny Buchan's got what do you do a twenty a twenty eight two round Brands GP on a on a this is a couple of years back on his super stock bike I would have put him ninth in a super bike race. <laughs> Mate, that's oh, treaded. You know your numbers, boy. Tires. You know your numbers. Oh, uh, so that's the scavenge pump for the dry sump. Uh, yes. What's that so, water pump on the back of something? Yeah, water pump, thermostat. Oh, there's the feed in so what the have you have? Have you had that blast there? Is that, is that new? No, just brand new pump. Brand new. Yeah, yeah. Go on, how much have you in it there? Three and a half grand. So that's the main feed into the block for the oil pump. And then that's the eight scavenge ports then. So it's a four chamber, four chamber scavenge. Right. Yeah, on a big build like that, you just wouldn't take risk don't with take an oil pump. Nah. Don't take risk with oil pump. So, yeah. Full of geeky stuff. 
thought you'd like it in here. Yeah, but electric's much quicker, isn't it? Oh, I'm not doing electric. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, that's oh, so no liners in this block. There, right? No liners in this block. No. <laughs> go on, what's this out? Uh, RS5. Ah, uh, right. Okay. So you don't uh, liner those. Uh, no, it's just. Oh, what are they? Four um, liter. Uh, four point two. And they're five point two. The V10s yeah. are five. Right. Okay. Just V8, V10. 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 Right. Um, no, that's just like a um, just a repair rebuild. It had a problem. Um, what are you clean that block with? Uh, just my parts washer. Okay, that's quite mint, isn't it? Yeah. Just a. Um, are you Super B? No. Which is. Um, uh, good on like titanium and alloys and stuff, running okay. at 60 degrees, trucking in there for right, an hour. Right? Yeah, mint mate. Yeah, mint. I want a sonic cleaner, but the money for a sonic cleaner to take a block is like eye watering. But yeah, I could live in here. Yeah, so the electric job. Yeah. It's not for me. There's no way to put a race gas in. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. We've no flames, have we? We've no exhaust. Well, I mean, we've no waste gas. <laughs> crack it off. We've no. Do you know? Do you know what? When you fired that Merlin up, oh, come on. Could, name me. Okay. Do you know nothing. what I mean? Name me nothing. something else that has made you feel like that. Nothing. Nothing. You stand at the start line of Santa Pod and you listen to an open pipe pro mod idling, or you listen to a 911 RSR and World Endurance. Sorry, nothing. mate. Electric. I for me. saw. <laughs> what was we doing? Was it the first round of the NHRA in yeah. Florida somewhere? Gainesville. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. This was years ago. Top fuel. When you see that with your own eyes, the most impressive thing I have ever seen ever with my own eyes. When you see a top fuel, it's just fucking blow. Like the one, yeah, thousand, but that was a thousand feet. Was big, yeah, just after the the band of quarter miles. What are they doing? Like three, oh, God. six, six yeah, three, yeah. one, two, three, is it three, what, yeah. And then like the way they banned the quarter miles went to a thousand feet, it ain't made any difference. There's no speed, it's <laughs> just mental. It's just more runoff at the end of the track. Absolutely mental. The world's most powerful race engine, just, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, two miles per cylinder, push rods. And an engine that's designed off. to be taken apart in half an hour. I know, I know. But not here. But standard camshafts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then they just sit, live inside that bridge then. Yeah. So rather than have individual cam caps, um, they're just held down with the bridge, which you just gotta be careful how you tighten them up because you can flex the bridge. I suppose you ain't got any worry about any valve clearances, so I'd right tap No, no, not really. We check piston to valve, and I've got some variators that I've modified so I can adjust the min and max retard, so I know. Right what my swing when I'm on the engine management I know what my pistons of valve clearance is at any point yeah so just so I know but you're only ever going to get safer are you if it's only ever going to retard retard you don't advance the inlet level uh, uh, sorry advance the exhaust level. no right so you, yeah but at least you know your numbers so yeah um, so what, what's that there is that uh, high pressure fuel, fuel pump, pump. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 200 bar like I say it's a fair sap there isn't it 200 bar yeah We've had them now where. Um, I don't think you see that on the pedal. I know like a diesel's a mental outlet. Well, yeah, even higher. Oh, yeah. Fucking 6,000 yeah. pounds, like the XPI Scania or something. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I didn't think you would see that with the, the, the pedal. We've had them punch um, the. Not on the R8, we've had it done on like some of the smaller stuff where it's punched the bolts out for the DI pump to come in, not run in. And um, it's literally pulled the threads have just been where the pump's been on and off through his service in life and that's yeah, sort of yeah, yeah, the threads yeah. have got weak and it's just punched the pump out of the rock cover where it's pulled the threads yeah so about them boys that well, I built a bloody tranny van with a like crazy and I, I ended up putting the engine in the back and Radical come down and give me hand with a gearbox and was on about direct injection and I said oh, that, that has to be timed yeah because of the demand like they're running secondary injectors, but because of the duty cycle that they're running on the main DI injectors, yeah. that had to be timed. Yeah. You just think, shit. You know, obviously you've got six phases of injection beyond over 270 yeah. degrees. Surely that will keep on top of it. Yeah, no? and I think. No, I, 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 would, I would have struggled to believe that. So it's the, they're trying to time it so the pump priming is done when the valves are closed. So you don't get, when, sorry, when the injectors are closed. So you don't get the pump priming pressure when one injector's open, because then you'll get 
spike. an imbalance. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, the yeah, the yeah, pump yeah. timing's done for when all the injectors are shut. Yeah. So right. it's a two lobe on those, and it's a three lobe. Where'd you on learn all that? I just you find it out the hard way. Yeah. Don't you? Um, I love it. It, is, it is interesting when you get playing with it of what different things do what and you know like I said about you wouldn't affect you wouldn't think playing with your secondaries would affect your knock window or what your knock's doing no but you know, you've got reasons behind why they make a difference make a change so yeah yeah I can't be doing with just I've been told that so that's the no, answer right, I need to yeah. I need to so I bought a combustion pressure sensor. What are you putting that in there? So that's, I've had spark plugs made to take the sensor, so yeah. then I can put it in the V10s, so then we can measure in cylinder pressure. Okay, yeah, that costs But you're not letting it run like that, that Yeah. Full time? Uh, no, 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 I, just it would just be like dying yeah, 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 yeah. Mainly because the sensor's two and a half grand, Yeah. and then it's a Plex analyzer, so I basically spent 10 grand on a combustion oh, I pressure. I see them systems. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of boys running them dash. I mean, I just run a name dash. Yeah, yeah. Plex dashes look trick. Yeah, so they do a combustion analysis. That's sad, so I'm advertised. But honestly, it's just like, the, getting a plug modified costs 500 quid. They're like, don't drop the plug. So basically what they do is they machine a hole in the bottom of the plug to the, th to the outside of the threads. Yeah. Machine a channel down the threads mm -hmm. and then drill a hole up through where your socket goes. It's sour, yeah. it is. And then, um, uh, oh, here you go. You might have So one's from McLaren and one's from R8. And then literally, you just screw your sensor in there then. So it's good for obviously doing pressure. What it's not good at is um, picking up the knock wave. So what you can do is you can machine the sensor into the combustion chamber itself. So if you go from the outside of the block, say from here, yeah, through the cast into the outside, yeah, then you can measure the pressure wave mm -hmm. on the outside, which gives you a good indication of knock. Yeah. The problem is when it's done through the plug, is it kind of averages out the combustion reading, so you don't get the knock wave because you're the wrong side of it you're inside it rather than outside it does that make sense yes yes so if you wanted to do knock analysis versus combustion pressure you'd have to put it into the cylinder head rather than into the plug but maybe i might get that keen but i just want to know how much when i put a bar of boost in how much everyone goes oh yeah you lift the head at this power why is everything done relative to power why is it X power or X this mm -hmm. or X that. Mm -hmm. So I haven't got a clue. What those for So that was done by Optrand in America. So I sent them four four of each plug and they sent me back one of each modified. But good way to make money, mate. A thousand pounds of fucking plug modifying gone there.